Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm still at Nordic Computers here in Denmark. Nordic Computer is a big computer broker here in Denmark. It's the largest independent computer broker and they have let me use some of their equipment to uh, show to you and make some good videos. Hopefully, years back I was actually asking Lenovo if I could film some of their equipment, borrow some of their shirts and show it to you guys. And they did that. We did a couple of servers. I did the Lenovo X3650 Model 5 and we did the X3850 X6. Awesome videos. I did a whole series on those. But I asked for this one. This is a Lenovo X3690 and it's an X5. The Lenovo slash IBM System X3690 X5 is special in the way that it uses two of the Intel Xeon X7 processors where all the other servers in the 2U form factor uses the E5 processor, this uses the E7. And the E7 processors are available in the E7 2800 series, 4800 series and 8800 series. So, um, well, that's what this server can do. You can start with one CPU and then if you need another one, well, it has a QPI link back here that you pop in and you can put in a secondary CPU. And you will have the total of 20 cores available to you and they are equipped with hyperthreading and so you get a server with 40 logical cores. The first generation of those and then um, together with that it can handle up to 2 terabytes of RAM. If you want 2 terabytes in this you will have to buy an extra um, magazine on top or on the bottom of it which will only store the RAM. They call that the Max 5 and that is also available for other of their systems. But without the Max 5 it can handle one terabyte of RAM and inside we will find 32 slots for memory. There is nothing special about the front of this server. It has room for 16 drives starting with number 0, 15. So 16 2.5 inches hard drives in the front. Then we have the normal VGA connection, two USB ports, and orange LED is hidden in here. It um, only lights up when there is something wrong with the server. And we have the on off button protected with a thinky here, so it's harder to turn on and especially turn off. So, but you can put that aside and then it's easier. Then we have the location button which uh, you press and it will light up blue on the back of the server. There's some network activity. There is a couple of other LEDs here that will light up if something is wrong with the server. We have an information mark and an excavation mark. And this whole thing, which is the Lenovo Lightpath Diagnostics, um, pops out and you will get different LEDs if there is different problems in the server. Plus it's able to show you with a couple of LEDs here um, if it's a more specific problem. The front of this server looks exactly like in probably the X3650 model 3 is more or less the same front. They have just changed um, the label over here but when we get inside we'll see that there is more changes. Let's turn it around the back and see what we have here. This looks very different from the Model 3 of the X3650. Here it's called System Management. I'm not sure if it's actually an IMM as the very first one. We have a VGA connection. We have some extra LEDs which is kind of the same LEDs that we have on the front but if we are looking at the server on the back we will have a health, we will have the light tower, the location beacon thing and we have this last LED that shows orange if there's something wrong with the server. We have a serial connection. We have a link OK, um, which is for something here. So let's pop this back in. Right beside that, um, it has a couple of LEDs. Link 1, OK. Link 2, OK. Then we have four USB ports, probably USB 2. We have two network connections right there and we have four power supplies here and these are well 
they are good for both the American market and the European market. So they can handle from 100 to 127 volts and from 200 volts to 240 volts. And they are the same power supplies as goes into the X3650 model 2 and 3. Otherwise we have some PCI cards here and these are PCI Express 2, X8 and X8 and X8 but it's really in 4 and 1. And we have another X8 right there. So that's about it for the back of the server. So let's go in. This server has a weird opening here that pops up. And you can exchange the fans from here. I haven't seen this in very many of their servers. It was normal in their older servers. I know that I have it in my X336 and I saw it in an X. 3550 model 1 that also had this separate opening for exchanging fans you're able to exchange five fans down here and um, I'm not really able to see if there's also fans there but my guess is that there are these five fans that you can exchange by using this opening here but let's um, open it on the blue lever here so open sesame and all of these are orange, which means they are hot swappable. All the blue stuff. So as soon as you open the case of the server, well, you're supposed to turn it off. On the lid of the server, there is a little bit of everything. Here is all the errors that you can get on the light path diagnostics panel in front of the server. There is how this PCI Express adapter thing comes in and out and how to put PCI Express ports in there is the order of how to put in the ram blocks there is something about the power supplies uh, the four power supplies how they are redundant what the different uh, leds on the power supply means you can have ac good and dc not good or the other way around it will tell you at which point the power supply is really bad so if there is power on the power supply it will be green if there is no power on that power supply well it will be orange then we have the system board over here and there is an explanation of what everything is down on the system board and I might need that along the way so I won't put this away too far so on the front of the show we have the normal disk things very similar to what I've seen in the x3650 models the model 3 we have the back plane of the hard drives here this one has uh, is ready for four drives so only one plug which actually ends right here so um, this is a service server this is one of the servers that if a customer has one of these servers this would be the thing that they bring out there to uh, start swapping out and testing if that one was bad if the system board was bad if the riser card was bad and maybe sometimes it's easier just to pop this server in and put all the good stuff from the other server over to this one and whatever is fastest is usually the best way did I forget to tell you that it had a CD-ROM drive? well it has and that is located down here the cables go this way under this assembly we could just try and take this fan assembly out apparently there is no fans over here so we can take this out which means that you can pop out all the fans at once which is really nice oh this is new so the CD-ROM goes into a connection here together with the light path diagnostics right there and here is the that's the VGA and yeah the VGA connection is the black one and this and this gray one is the is the USB connections fans go down there over here we have we have, what is that that's a big cap of some kind hmm? this pops up wonder what this is oh this is connectors for the top power supplies so the bottom two power supplies are supplied from the system board and the two top ones are supplied with this thing which uh, kind of transfer powers from the power supply and down to the system board okay awesome very nice put that back in on the top here we have 16 slots for memory 
which we would have to fill up according to the lead. There is some electronics here um, on this thing that you pop out. There's a big beefy battery or capacitor there, plus there's a button that you can press. And if there have been a problem with one of these mini slots, well, there's a corresponding LED here on the side that will light up and tell me that that block was bad. There are some beefy connections that um, goes down to the system board. On the system board, we have another 16 blocks of RAM here. So in total, there are 32 blocks of RAM. And next to that are the two CPUs. And these were again the Intel Xeon, the 2800 series, 4800 series and the 8800 series has CPUs that will fit into this server. As this is a very high-end enterprise server, there is not a lot of smaller things here. It doesn't have plugs for all the different stuff that you normally get. You get a riser card, so you would be able to put in some fiber channel adapters or some 10G network. And we have another one which is kind of special because it holds a couple of USB sticks as well. So a couple of PCI Express ports there, X8, another X8 and two USB sticks. So you, um, and these are very easy to plug in from upstairs. I'm not sure if they are able to run in a redundant mode. That would be awesome. Um, not that these ever fails, but well, it could be cool. Over here, we have the cables for the hot drives that comes down. Um, apparently there have been more hard drives in this because there are two cables going down the back here. Um, there's nowhere to plug these so I must assume that this server has had a RAID controller sitting down here. Um, probably one of these slots here has been used for the RAID controller because well it looks like the cables kind of bend in this way. So my guess these are some really big CPUs. I can tell you they were expensive like you know the word. Uh, we do have a power connection here, a 6 pin connection for a graphics card or something else that uses a lot of power. Right next to, you can see that, right next to the BIOS battery which is the usual CR2032 3 volt button lithium ion battery. This server is special because of these two CPUs. When this server was brand new, well these CPUs was the top of the market. You could get these CPUs with a maximum of 10 cores each. So this server would be able to handle 20 cores and with hyperthreading you had 40 cores available to you. And we are talking years back. And back in 2011 when this server was reasonably new, well 20 cores was a lot. And 40 cores in VMware was awesome. This server was regularly used as a hypervisor. Um, put in two good CPUs, you would have 20 cores. And all the memory in this one, and you could have 20 cores and one terabyte of RAM. Back in 2011, that was decent. Also, it has been used for high-end stuff like SQL, Oracle and SAP. Databases where the license are so expensive that you just need the best hardware for this to run maximum performance. I found a date on this. This is from 8th of July 2011. The server is six years old and again it would have a couple of very big heat sinks sitting right here. Now this comes without CPUs because it's supposed to go out to somewhere where there is a broken server and they would take the CPUs out of the broken server and put it into a good server or simply take out the system board. Riser cards would also, this looks very similar to what we see in other servers and these cards, um, they seem to reuse them in different models. So you could get a riser card here with an X16 slot so that you have something to use that power connector for and you could put in a graphics card here. I I have never seen that done. Let's put this back in. That's awesome. 32, oh, there's another date. This one is from the 25th of November, 2010. So the server model itself might be older than 2011. Well, it probably is when this is made back then. There we are. 
fan assembly. This is just a piece of metal, but it, it makes it really easy to pop out all the fans at once. So, not a bad idea. Um, you never do this. I have only done it for video purposes. So, but hot plug fans, and you get to them through the hole in the lid. This servo was one of my dreams way back. I really wanted one of these, but they were not available. This is not a cheap server. They they didn't have an entry level edition with a cheap CPUs. No, this started out expensive. So I never got one of these and um, don't think that I can put it in the car without anyone noticing. But, uh, but yeah, now I at least got to have a look inside of it. it um, I still want one just to play around with. I do not believe that this server is really good for uh, what it did back in 2010-11. Nowadays you can get a lot more power out of an E5 processor than you can get out of this older E7 processor. But it's still an awesome server and it does actually use the IMM2. I just happen to find that in the manual. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel and check me out on Twitter where I need more friends. So have a nice day. Bye bye.